Good morning everyone, Tractor Man 44 here. Um, up to this point, I think you've been uh, you've been exposed to laying out and folding up some straight duct and, and some simple uh, one-way transitions and maybe even a plenum and uh, possibly even a plenum T. But today we're going to go one step farther. Uh, you know, you got to get your air back to your furnace and that's called the return air system. Uh, and once you get your trunk line all the way back by the furnace, you've got to make the return air drop to go down and go into that furnace. And so today we're going to concentrate on uh, making a, a fitting or two in that uh, in that return air drop. And so what we're going to do um, is we're going to make a make a return air fitting that's going to look something like this. Uh, it's just going to, this is return air coming down here. It's going to turn 90 degrees. It's going to enter the side of the furnace or the furnace box in this particular case. It's an electric air handler. And But what we're going to do, we're going to add a wrinkle. We're going to put a slot in here and to where you can have an external, uh, externally serviceable filter instead of having to fight those silly little thumb screws and stuff off the bottom of them and try to ferret the filter out. You know, it's all drawn up inside there in towards the coil and all that stuff. This is going to be a nice simple slot where you walk up to it, slide the filter out, throw it away, slide a new filter in and be done with it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to establish the height. We said 23 and 3 quarter. Well, there's a reason for that like to optimize my metal. I got 40 inch uh, metal and uh, remember we got a quarter inch we got to fold into the into the block farmer so if I make the fitting if I lay it out at, at 23 and 3 quarter I can use half the width of the sheet you know I can optimize the use of my metal so if I come up here and just go ahead and mark 24 inches that's going to be uh, exactly what I need. I need to allow for our drive up at the top so I mark 23 inches at that point too We've got the top or the height of the of the fitting already established. So I mark it. We know the heel wrapper or the back of the fitting is going to be back here. That's going to require a quarter inch. So we'll go ahead and mark a quarter inch on that. And then we go in here, we have a 12 inch uh, 12 inches in width. So off of the quarter inch mark, we'll measure to the 12 inch mark, or 12 and a quarter from the outside. Add another quarter because there's a lock farmer in there too. We can mark these. So we have our 12 inch dimension and we've got a four inch throat on it. So if I go from this 12 inch and add four inches in from that 12, that's going to be the leading edge. But then we have to have one additional inch for the uh, half inch double hemmed reinforced uh, uh, bend on the end, so I add one more inch there. So then I transfer all the way back to here. That's going to be 17 and a quarter that gets me all the way to the edge of that. So I'll come back out here to 17 and a quarter. That's going to be the cut edge. We'll drop in the one inch. There's 16 and a quarter. We'll mark those two guys right there. There's only two things we haven't established yet. The width of that opening going into the side of the furnace is going to be 16 inches. I like to make it just, just a little over 16. There's a reason for that. Then we're going to add a quarter inch to that because, again, we've got that wrapper that goes inside there. We need it for the lock farmer. We've got one last thing to locate, and we've got the, uh, the sides of the duct, uh, the fitting laid out. Now, remember, we was talking about the easy edger. If we were going to make a radius fitting, we would use that easy edge to make that 3 16 90 degree instead of a quarter inch 90. But uh, I don't really use that easy edge too awful much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of interpolate and paint, paint. The width up here is 12 inches. So we don't want to cut across here and minimize that distance across that throat. So I'm going to make sure that we pick a point down here that's wider than the 12 inch duct here as it pulls into the 16. So if that's the case, anywhere around this area that's an even number works out fine for me. And that number is going to be 14 inches. So if I put me a mark here at 14, double check and make sure that that angle is not there. You go, it's going to be 13, 14 inches across there. So if I come out about seven inches, which is actually half of 14 incidentally, that's kind of cool. All right, we got to get our quarter inch mark down here. And connect these two dots right here. 
and there we have it. Here's our 16 inch. It's going to turn right up the return duct. And we've maintained at least the width of this so we don't increase the velocity phenomenally as it goes into the side of the furnace. We're going to have a uh, double hemmed 90 on this guy here. So we need a half and a one. We got a quarter inch up the heel wrapper. We got a quarter inch on the toe wrapper. And up here we're going to have a drive. So we'll get a half and a, and a one up there. So now to notch. Bring it in straight to the one and knock that off. Come into your intersection of those two quarter inch. Remember the cheek bender we used in uh, one or two episodes ago? This is going to be the cheek bender will be folding those. Now what we'll do, we'll invert this, turn it face down so that we end up with a left side and a right side. And then we'll transfer all those points to the next piece of metal. And uh, we're going to have our two sides of the duct fabricated. <coughs> now what we do to get a filter slide in here, in that four inch throat is we'll measure back a specific distance. I like to use a circumference rule because it's like an inch and a quarter. I measure back about two and a half inches, two and a half inches, and then mark both sides of the circumference rule. Just mark both sides of the circumference rule and then measure back in five eighths of an inch, five eighths of an inch, mark right straight down the center of that uh, slot. And then we're gonna cut that out and there's some fancy notching that you gotta do in order to get that slot the way you want it. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this back for reinforcement. And we're going to fold this back as a reinforcement, leaving us a roughly an inch and a quarter, uh, inch and three sixteenths or so uh, slot for that one inch filter, which is actually measures 15 16 inch, uh, have that thing slide right in there. So I'm gonna fold that, bring it back and show it to you. Now I know you guys remember the, uh, the cheek bender. Perfect example right here. Sorry, I bumped the, tri the tripod. Perfect example of how uh, how that is used. Remember, I told you we cut that uh, inch and a quarter out of there, and we reinforced it by folding five eighths of an inch back on this and on this. So now, if you visualize this being assembled in the toe wrapper up top and around the heel wrapper down here, we're going to end up with roughly an inch and three sixteenths slot for that filter to slide into. So I've got to bend the drive tabs on this, then we'll measure up the heel wrapper, the toe wrapper, run those through the lock farmer, and be ready to put that together. When we measure these, remember we said we had a four inch throat, so that's a given. We know there's going to be four plus one because of the double hem. And then we just measure from the inside of that 90 up to the one inch scribe, which is six and three quarter plus one, so that's seven and three quarter. So we add seven and three quarter plus four plus one. That's going to be 7 and 4 is 11, 12 and 3 quarter, 12 and 3 quarter. The width of the duct is 20. We add an inch for the Pittsburgh on both sides, so that's 22. So it's going to be 12 and 3 quarter by 22 will be the, the uh, toe wrapper. That 4 inch dimension there transferred squarely down to here results in 7 inch dimension here. So 7 plus 1 for the double hem. Then we go from that specific scribe point inside there on those two angles to this one up here. We have uh, 11 and roughly uh, 5 16. So let's call it 11 and 1 quarter because there's a little give there. And from here, if you remember from the layout, that should be 17. The measure for accuracy to the one inch scribe mark, that 16 plus 1 is 17. So 17 plus 11 and a quarter plus 8. 8 and 8 is 16. Transfer the quarter. 
36 and one quarter by 22. That's the cut size of the heel wrapper. So I'm gonna lay that out and we will uh, go about the business of uh, making those. Now this one I told you before we weren't going to assemble, but I actually have to because this is too labor intensive to assemble on a job site, you know, on your hands and knees down on a concrete floor. I'd much rather assemble these right here in the comfort of, uh, of my, nice, uh, my nice heated shop, so to speak. You know how a fellow always says that it just ain't enough hours a day to get everything done. Uh, well, that holds true for today, too. I really wanted to get a little bit farther along, but uh, didn't get it. It's, it's Sunday, you know, I got to take it easy anyway, you know. Uh, anyway, I think we've, um, <laughs> we, we've covered enough territory, you know, for the day. I think we're going to draw, draw a close to this here. This should be, this should be part five. <laughs> I still have no idea how far it's going to go. We ain't even got to the good stuff yet. But it's been fun so far anyway. At least it is for me, like I say. Um, so at any rate, this is Tracker Man 44, man. And I am out of here.